Good morning, and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church. On this, the second Sunday after the Epiphany, it's January 14th, 2024. We're delighted to have you with us this morning. The service will start in just a few moments.
Good morning. Indeed, good morning, and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm Father Milton Williams. I am the rector here at St. Francis, and on behalf of the wardens of this congregation, the vestry, the clergy staff, and every member of this church, I welcome you to worship this day here on this second Sunday in this season of Epiphany. If by chance you are worshiping with us online, and I suspect because it's cold outside, quite a few people are choosing to stay warm at home today. But if you're worshiping with us online, you should see on your screen about right now a QR code. That QR code, that black and white box on, the, on your screen, will take you to a place where you will find a visitor's card. I invite you to complete the visitor's card and then submit it. You'll also find an opportunity for of, of worship, so you should see the order of worship service also online today, as well as an opportunity to make a financial gift to the life and ministry of this congregation. If you're worshiping here today and you consider yourself a guest, a first-time worshiper, all of the hymns are listed on the hymn board. You can also use your handheld device and you'll find the order of worship on your handheld device or your tablet. And do know if you're visiting with us today that at the time of Eucharist, at the time of the saying of the Mass, the great Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, every single one of you are invited to come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ today. By way of announcement, uh, on January 23, on January 23, at the Palladium Movie Theater Cinema, uh, there is, will be the showing of a film, A Case for Love, and uh, our presiding bishop, Michael Corey, will be presented in that, or featured in that film. And if you want more information about that, you can see Laura Kilmartin. She'll gladly give you more information about that. That, again, is Tuesday, a week from this coming Tuesday, January 23, at 7 o'clock in the evening. Tomorrow, this nation, the United States, will celebrate uh, Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s day in commemoration of his life and ministry. And so our parish office will be closed on tomorrow. You know, we are celebrating this year, this year we are celebrating our 70th, our 70th anniversary here at St. Francis as a parish in the Episcopal Diocese of North Carolina. And so I was asking myself, in relationship to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, what correlation might there be? And this is what I discovered, and maybe some of you know more than me. The last time Dr. King was in North Carolina, the last time he was in Greensboro, let me correct that. The last time Dr. King was in Greensboro, not just North Carolina, but Greensboro, was in 1958. 1958. And Dr. King spoke at Bennett College in 1958. And just think about it. That's two years before the sit-ins began downtown at the Woolworth. Dr. King was here two years before that. And as it relates to St. Francis, Peter Robinson was the rector of St. Francis in 1958. So just think about how our lives are involved in the movement of history and how we participate in the full life of this church, this nation, and in this city of Greensboro. And perhaps maybe you know more information than I about Greensboro, the relationship between the Civil Rights Movement and Dr. King. And so this day, this day we gather here in worship as a community of faith to have an experience with the living God here and now.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak. For your servant is listening. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will raise, also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, 
He said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, we heard in our first Bible reading from the Hebrew Bible text of 1 Samuel, we heard these words, then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen. Well, my dear friends, we, we are well through the threshold of this liturgical season of Epiphany. Epiphany. Epiphany is a time, it is a season of light and illumination. As a matter of fact, I, I invite you to pray again the opening collect appointed for this day, the opening prayer that, that Father Matt prayed for us about light, illumination, this season of epiphany. For the church, epiphany is a God-given time for us to see and live in that light that shines in the darkness. Epiphany is that God-given time for us, for the church to acknowledge that light which shines on Jesus, who is the light of the world, and to declare that God desires for that same light that shines on Jesus to shine in and through us. This season to acknowledge and declare and to abide, to constantly live in the light, in the light this, this world so desperately needs, to emanate light into the world. Yes, it is about light. However, this season of Epiphany this year, this season of Epiphany this year, if you notice your calendar, is a bit shorter. There are only five Sundays in the season of Epiphany, this year, this year, Lent comes early than usual. And so, my recommendation to all of us is, while it is Epiphany before Lent, let's have all the fun we can. <laughs> <laughs> and in having fun, let us, let us emanate the light, let us be God's light to this world. But not only is it epiphany tide, we are also starting well into a new calendar year of 2020. I have to learn how to say this, 2024. Yes, 2024. Now, putting resolutions aside, I'm not gonna ask you if you made any New Year's resolutions, and if you ask me if I made any, I'm not gonna tell you, okay? I do believe, however, we all would do well, I would do well, we all would do well to, to enter into this relatively new year intentionally, intentionally, purposefully, and prayerfully. Because I think, I do believe that will make all the difference in how we will live our lives, not just today, but for the rest of the days of this year. And, and so it is 
through all of this, through, through this, the lens of epiphany, through the lens of this new calendar year, I, I need to let you know that that is how I read and how I heard our first Bible reading appointed for today in this second Sunday of this season of epiphany. Now, I must confess that out of all the Old Testament Bible narratives, this one we heard, this one, the calling of the young boy Samuel, out of all of them is perhaps the one, perhaps the one I hold most dear. You see, like Samuel, from my childhood, I had a deep and abiding sense that God was calling me into the vocation of ministry. As the old folk would say, since I was knee high to a grasshopper. And like Samuel, from my earliest memories, I have been surrounded not just by one, but by a host of elders who have helped me to listen and hear the voice of God in my life. I will tell you, I will tell you, I would not be the priest that I am today here standing with you if it were not for all of the old women and men who themselves sought to follow the way of Jesus and make this earth look like it is in heaven. If it were not for all those people that I could just name, a litany of people, men and women, who love me enough to form me into the priest that I am today. I would even dare say some of you elders <laughs> who love me enough who are still making me into the person and the priest that I am today. And I thank you for being that for me and countless others. The Bible tells us that the boy Samuel was ministering unto the Lord under Eli. Translated, Samuel was an acolyte serving under the old priest Eli. The Bible tells us that Eli was old and he was blind, yet still in faithfulness to God, he was performing his duties as a priest in the temple. Living in the temple, can you imagine as an acolyte living in the church? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like I live here at the church. <laughs> living in the temple, the priest and the acolyte, Living there in the church, the Bible tells us that one night while they were asleep, the young boy was asleep and he was awakened to a voice. Samuel, Samuel. The boy woke up and said, here am I, and ran to Eli and said, did you call me? And Eli responded, I didn't call you. Go back to bed, go back to sleep. The boy goes back to bed and to sleep. And again, the boy is awakened by a voice, Samuel. And again, Samuel goes to Eli, the priest. Did you call me? To which the old man replied, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. This voice called out to Samuel three times. Not one, not two, but three times. And after the third time, the Bible says, Eli perceived that it was the Lord calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now, having heard that, my dear friends, when you hear this Bible narrative today, what is it saying to you today? When you hear the voice of Eli, what do you hear? When you hear the voice 
of Samuel. What do you feel? In this narrative, to you, in this narrative, what does God's voice sound like to you? What truths do you find in this Bible story that will help you to live a better today and a better year? What message might this passage of Scripture be speaking to all of us as a community of faith gathered here and now, be it physically here or watching online wherever you may be? What is this Bible story, this narrative speaking to us today? Could it be this? There is a spiritual dimension to being in the right place at the right time. Did you hear that? There is a spiritual dimension to being in the right place at the right time. Let me suggest to you that being in the right place at the right time is not just about your physical locality. For the people of God, being in the right place at the right time is, has very little to do with your luck or your fortune and far more to do with your relationship with God. Hope you heard that. Furthermore, I believe to be in the right place at the right time requires both external and internal positioning. Let me go on to say that when your mind, your heart, and your soul are in the right place, you will have a far better opportunity of your body being in the right place. Think about the last time you got in trouble. Think about the last time you were in a place you really should not have been. Let me suggest to you that your heart and your mind and your soul got there before your body did. Let me suggest to you, you had long thought about where you were going to be and what you were going to do or not do. <laughs> Are you with me this morning? It's about the heart. It's about the soul. It's about the mind. Eli was in the right place at the right time because he was, he was ministering unto the Lord in the temple of the Lord. As a priest in the temple at Shiloh, Eli was physically proximate to the things that are holy. Literally, Eli lived in the very presence of God and with other people of God. Physically, externally, Eli was in the right place at the right time. If we want to be at the right place at the right time, then we too must physically and externally make ourselves proximate to things that are holy, just, righteous, and good. If we want to be at the right place at the right time, we would do well to committing ourselves to being where God is. I mean, it reminds me, it reminds me of that old, that old hymn, lead me, guide me, oh, you know it, along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord. Lead me. That's more than a hymn. That's a prayer that, that God would lead you and physically and mentally and spiritually put you into the place where God wants you to be.
want to be at the right place at the right time. Eli was at the right place at the right time because he was ministering unto the Lord and was physically with God's people. Eli, let me go on to say, was at the right place at the right time internally, not just externally, but internally. He was a man of faith and a man of prayer. It was Eli's calling, as it is your calling, as it is my calling, to pray with and pray for the people of God. Internally, Eli had to position himself so that he could hear the voice of God amidst all of the other voices of this world. Where do you place yourself so that within your heart and soul you are able to hear the voice of God? Is it in the morning early before your feet are planted on the floor? Is it early in the morning that you center yourself in that space where you are opening yourself up to hear the voice of God? Is it in the car while you are driving to and fro in the quietness and solitude of your car driving? Is it, where is it? Throughout the day, what time and space do you make internally for you to be in tune to the voice to the very voice of God. As a priest in the temple and as a judge over God's people, Eli's heart and soul had to be tuned to the voice of God. And he was called to serve, to serve through hearing the voice of God, to be in the right relationship with God, my dear friends, is a matter of the heart to be in the right relationship with God it is to be in the right place at the right time. Hence, Eli, Eli with a discerning heart was able to say to the boy Samuel, go, go and lie down. And if he speaks, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, now I, I have to add this little bit, I mean, because, and I invite you to read the earlier chapters of, of 1 Samuel, specifically chapter 2. If, you, if you've not read it, I invite you to go home and read it. Let me, let me say this. You, you need to know that the Eli was not perfect, nor was his family. Now, you need to know that, and it, the Bible is very clear about that. I again encourage you to read chapter 2 of 1 Samuel. The Bible refers, listen, Eli was a priest. He had two sons. He had two sons. And the Bible, the Bible characterizes his sons as being despicable and worthless. Okay? Now, you think that your family is messed up? You think that your family has issues? <laughs> you think that your family, what, what the folk, the street people say, is a bit cray cray? <laughs> I invite you to read about Eli and his children. Now, it was not a perfect family. And let's even be clear. Uh, furthermore, Eli himself was not a perfect man because before Samuel, Samuel was born, Hannah, his mother, came to the temple to pray that indeed she would conceive. And when she went to the temple to pray before Samuel was born, Eli accused her of something that was false. The priest judged her falsely. Yes, Eli was not a, a perfect person. But this this is the best part. Despite his family's situation and despite his own 
humanity, God still chose to use Eli as an instrument by which the people of God would continue to live as the people of God. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about my own life and I think about my own family and I think about my situation, thank God that God still chooses me to stand here before you on a Sunday morning. I mean, that's the grace. That's the good news. So, my dear friends, what, what are your highest hopes and dreams for yourself in this new year? Do you want to look around? Do you want to, to stand in a place, look around, and know that you are standing in the place where God is? Oh, I pray that you do. I pray that you do. I, I ask you to pray for me that, that when, I, when I take an account of my day in and out, that, that, that I would say, I'm able to say when I close my eyes at night and go to sleep, that, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that, that throughout this day, my, I've walked in the way that you've called me to walk. And I've done the things that you've asked me to do. I've said the things you've asked me to say. You look at your life, will you be able to say that you're standing in the place where God is? Do you want your heart and your soul, in your heart and your soul, you want your heart and your soul to be right so that when God calls your name, <laughs> when God calls your name, that you would hear peace, you would hear love, you would hear calm, God, God calling you love. Love. In the right place. At the right time. What does that look like for you? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the altar flowers in the church given to the glory of God and in honor of the birthdays of Mary Grace, Patrick, and Grace given by Allison Porter. Lord, in your mercy, in your prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body of and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, 
And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Amen. You best your person.